Hello, hello, everyone. Amanda Grace here with you this afternoon. We've got Toby in the office. I've got Sadie sitting to my left, your right. So if you see a tail go in front of the screen, it's her because she's sitting on my desk right now. Welcome to everybody jumping on to our moderators in our Ark of Grace team. Thank you for helping us do what we do from the Lord. Yes, I see Texas, Cincinnati, South America. Hello in South America. God bless you. I see Missouri. So there's so many people, California jumping on. Andrew Sorcini is here with us. We have a lot to cover, including what is happening in the world right now financially because of basically we have two wars going on and we probably may have a third brewing with China, depending on what they're perusing and eyeing right now. So let's bring in Andrew that we'll do your questions. Also, we're going to do Q and a, get your questions ready for Andrew. So let's bring him in. Hey, how are you? Good. How are you, Andrew? I thought we should do something fun today. Have you on when I open up in prayer? Let's do it. Okay. Ready? And then we're going to get into everything. Cause I know there's a lot to talk about. Father God, in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, we come before you. Lord, we praise you for this time. We thank you for this day, Father God. Lord, we just ask you to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Acknowledging your son, Jesus Christ, died on the cross, was the word became flesh, died at Calvary, purchased us by the shedding of his blood, rose again and victoriously is seated at your right hand, where he is our advocate before your throne. Father, I ask you bless this time that your presence is welcome, Lord, to move, to go before us, to lead and guide us, no wisdom, counsel, might, power, and the reverential fear of the Lord. Father, we pray you order our steps, Lord. Lord, that you would be glorified above all, Father God. Lord, give us the wisdom we need and the counsel we need right now, Father God, to be good stewards, Lord, of what you have given us, Father God, for you mold us. You are the potter, we are the clay, and you are the author and fissure of our faith. We praise you this day in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen. Wasn't that a great way to start? The best. The, the best. best. That's right, Andrew. So there's a lot going on in the world. There's a whole lot of shaking going on. I know that's a song, but it's true. And so with what's happening now, Ukraine and Russia has been going on for a while, but now you add Israel to it and you have other Middle East countries, you know, in the middle, uh, you know, kind of like on the outskirts of this activity right now happening in Israel with Hamas. And then you had China who decided to come visit California, the leader of China, which I think the man just thinks everything's up for sale. I'm going to be very honest here. And so he comes comes to the United States to visit California. So how are all of these events going on affecting the markets? It's making the gold and silver market just extremely volatile, but uh, more on the upside for gold. Gold's about yeah. $90 away from the all time high and we've seen a couple of days recently where gold went up like forty dollars in one day so wow. we're just one good week away from being at an all-time mm. high on gold which for me it, it, we're not trying to necessarily make money when gold goes up we know that the gold is the most powerful i mean most it's the only real currency in the world that really because all the dollars that we're out there spending whether it be here or china or russia they're not backed by anything real so the, do, the gold and silver should be allowed to realize its true value. And it's not been able to do that because it's been manipulated. I think soon they're going to let it run. So why do you think that is that it starts to uh, become volatile and, and move the way it does when you see wars break out on the earth and you see at this, you know, explosive activity in the Middle East? How, wh how why does this happen? It's a, it reminds people in every country out there just how fragile life is and how these things can and do happen it's um, mm -hmm. for us here in the united states we've not had anything like this since world war ii and before yeah. that um, the great depression was a big um, financial uh, situation with it, it was those are the two biggest things where our country had had to go through like hardship that was extremely difficult so we've had it so good for so long that we kind of forget that uh, that um it can affect anybody in any country at any time. And really the mainstream media won't tell you, but we're also in a financial war where 
Russia and China are colluding together along with other countries to de-dollarize the, the entire globe. And this, this is a financial war. And I remember back when I was younger in the 80s, we always thought that, um, that uh, there was a chance that the United States could go to war with Russia and it would be a nuclear war. We thought World War III would be one where it wipes out like the whole world. But uh, yeah. really, it's going to be a financial war more than anything. And I feel that that's what we're in right now. So let me ask you about the American markets. I'm going to ask you two questions. First of all, the, it's so that the form of currency in Israel is the shekel. Have you seen in, in the, with the currencies, any movement on the barometer here as far as like the shekel and those areas of the Middle East? I haven't because um, I don't see any trading pairs with the dollar and, and yeah. like, in, in the currency in the Middle East. All I know is that uh, about a week and a half ago, the dollar um, was crushed in a single day. It was down like 1%, which is an enormous um, down downside for a single day for, for the dollar. Yep. But it actually rebounded over the two days after that. But on that day, that's when gold and silver just shot up. So people should know that um, gold and silver go up when the dollar goes down. And um, I really feel that all the world's currencies are in trouble. I think we are going to a central bank digital currency for sure. And I base that on the fact that uh, a lot of people, especially younger people, want to pay for things with their phones. That's they want true. to use different cash apps. They love it. You don't have to touch cash anymore. And I think if you ask them and, and say, what do you think about the prospect that you never have to touch a dirty coin or, or dirty dollar bills ever again? And if you could just use your phone instead and transfer payments that way, they'll tell you that... Uh, they're already doing it and they wish that it would only work that way. So I think that uh, for us, we're remembering how things have always been using physical currency. I think we're a yeah. dying breed and it's just a matter of time. I think they kind of groom the younger generation for that with the, with the introduction of the technology they did. And then, you know, I think it's called Apple Pay and you've got Google Pay and, you know, you, you know, Grubhub and DoorDash and all these other apps. I think they sort of groomed it, you yeah. know, for the younger generation that way. Yeah. So for me, I want to own assets that I can have that are outside of the centralized banking system. If you go exactly. and buy real estate, you, you have to wire the funds for the real estate through a bank. So, so there's a, there's a paper trail of, of, the transactions that you're doing and same with cryptocurrency it's not private anymore everything can be traced back to you so for me i want the equivalent of what our parents or grandparents might have done when they used to tuck yeah. hundred dollar bills underneath the mattress or in the sock room i want to do that with gold and silver and that's what we help people do here so in the american market let's ask before we go to questions in the american market and what's happening in the stock market right now amidst all of this happening in the world? What is happening currently? Well, and the stocks have been artificially pushed up, and this has mostly been through uh, the policies that we have here of just printing more money to get out of debt. Yeah. So I'm seeing like today, the stock market was up a lot and it's it's an election year. So I think that it's in the best interest of Biden and and the people um, on his side to, to make give the appearance that everything here is great. And, uh, and and not let us see what's really going on, at least until after the election. It's and then, a deception. It is, because then after the election, then they can say, well, yes, um, every, everything that, that we're going through now is actually pretty bad, and uh, he'll blame it on the previous president. And um, I think that that's, I think they do that every time anyway. So it, for me, I'm not believing what we're seeing in the media. I'm preparing for the worst, hoping for the best and doing doing whatever I can to help change the course of, of where we're headed. But um, it seems that the dollar will be unseated as the world's reserve currency. And I think that's going to be good for gold. And here's what I think will happen with gold. Okay. Remember during COVID when there was big runs on the, um, on the shelves over yeah. at the supermarket, you couldn't yeah. find toilet paper or water anywhere. That's what's going to happen with gold here when the dollar gets unseated as the world's reserve currency, which is definitely it's going to happen sometime soon, probably next year. Now, let me ask you, uh, as far as purchasing gold, so people understand this, it, it is sold by the ounce, 
correct? Yes. And the gram, right? It's sold by the ounce, right? Or by the gram. You can buy a quarter ounce, half ounce. So, okay. so different denominations that are all based on the one ounce. Okay. And is gold or silver fluctuating more right now? Or are they both sort of fluctuating quite a bit? It's almost always silver. Silver okay. can have swings in 20% 20 per, 20 in either direction in short periods of time. Okay. So it's almost always silver, but we've seen a lot of movement in gold lately. We have, but that's been mostly upward, which okay. I'm grateful for. So would you suggest people buy both if they're going to call you or, or fill out a form and, and, and go through your, your uh, firm that they should buy gold and silver? They absolutely should. So it, it's not, there's not like a, co a cookie cutter approach to every, yeah. every person that calls in, but just, just to cover a couple of scenarios, let's say you had a second property that was a rental property and you don't feel good about the real estate market right now. And let's just say that you just sold that property. Now you're sitting on a bundle of cash that's in your checking account yeah. or your savings account. Well, if you don't feel comfortable about that and you think that you might reinvest it in a couple of years or after we see who the next president's going to be, well, then it might make sense to park a good chunk of that into gold. See, gold's typically not going to move too much in either direction. So it's a good store of value. But if you're looking for an actual investment, a long-term investment where you have the opportunity to, to make a bundle, if you can buy and hold for a long time, then silver is good for that because silver can double or triple in price easier than gold can. But you can't ever think about investing into silver in the short term. And unfortunately, sometimes people do that. I've, yeah. I've had clients reach out to me that bought silver in February and, um, and then they want to turn around and sell it back today and uh, and we're offering them less than what they paid for it and that's not a good feeling silver needs to be a two to five year hold minimum so if, if you think you might have to flip it and have to sell something back short term then go with a gold well exactly I, I yeah i think that's that's wise advice um and you know given that given that gold is you know Silver is great. And I think silver is wonderful for the, for, for, like you said, holding on for two, for two to five years, but with what's happening with the different currencies in the world, I think gold is, is a good chunk of what you buy. Let's put it that way. If you're going to purchase, make a significant amount of that gold to have on hand. So I do, I do agree with that. Um, I also, I also wonder uh, going into uh, going into November of 2024, how much gold fluctuates, and meaning goes up, really, before an election. So when you get right to the wire, Andrew, what have you seen in the past gold it's, do right before an election? Um, that la The last year before the election, yeah. usually gold and silver go up quite a bit. So um, we're, we're actually at that point right now, and, and, and it's already started. And I do expect that gold will hit an all time high, which really for that to happen, it only needs to get to like $2,069 an ounce, which it should be at 2,300, 24, 2,500 already. So I, I would expect that sometime in the near future, it will get to $2,500 an ounce. And if we all woke up tomorrow and saw that the price of gold was 2,500, we wouldn't be surprised. So I think that, um, that because we're almost certainly going to have a different president after November, the first week of November that we that we currently have, that creates uncertainty. And that's when people just want to be kind of um, kind of regroup, kind of hunker down and just be ready for for the change. So um, and they want hopefully it's the change. That they want. Yeah, it's and a hedge. They want a hedge. Absolutely. They want a hedge. Absolutely. You know, they want to protect what they have. Uh, Dolores Green is asking um, someone had asked a question earlier. She said, what do we do with life insurance policies? Should we cash them in? Well, for me, um, that's probably a question that I would refer that you ask your financial advisor about, because it's one of those things where if, if, if I go on different podcasts and I tell people cash out your life insurance policies and get gold and silver, that's the type of thing that could get me into trouble. So it, you would have to take into, into, um, take into effect, um, let's say, um, how much you have in the bank. Is your house paid for? Um, 
yes, are, exactly. uh, are your cars paid for? So um, it's a it's a tough one to answer, and I I feel like I could get in trouble if I if I steer you into the direction of gold <laughs> and silver. So I would uh, defer that one to your financial advisor for sure. Ed and Debbie are asking if the currency goes back to being backed by gold, how does that affect the value of physical gold, and how high could this go? Okay, that will that will actually make a run on gold and silver exactly like what we saw during covid it will it it's like when when you couldn't find toilet paper or water anywhere the shelves at, at your grocery store were barren that's what's going to happen with physical gold because there was a time even when three banks failed at the same time earlier this year when um, gold, physical gold and silver was very difficult to get it was taking like two three weeks before we could even deliver it and um and it really only takes somebody like Elon Musk out there saying that gold is the world's currency on a tweet, and that'll wipe out all of the available gold supply um, physically that, that you can get right now. It would take a couple of months for it to actually become available again. So I think that um, that we're banking on going on some sort of a gold-backed currency, and when that happens, our gold's going to be worth a lot. I mean, it could be five, ten thousand. 10000 They estimate it could be worth... Thirty to sixty thousand dollars an ounce, which is just wild to think of. But if you think of, of um, all the fiat currency, all the currencies that all the big countries in the world are just printing out of thin air—not just us, but uh, China and Russia are doing it. Many other countries are doing it. So, uh, for us to go back to something that's uh, that is a currency that's backed by something real, gold will skyrocket. Okay, this is interesting because you were talking about digital currency before. And many people are asking how much control would they have? So everything goes to the digitally backed currency. What happens? Well, I'm, I'm afraid that um, that some people will have control over your ability to purchase. Um, we think that uh, that you could go to, say, a gas station. And if you've already filled up your tank twice in the same month, maybe they decline the third purchase to try to do that. You actually do lose some of your freedom if it's if it is in a centralized banking system, which that's what the central bank uh, gold backed digital currency would be. I mean, it's great that it's backed by gold, but uh, it's still we're giving up our freedom. Whereas right now I can I can hand you cash, Amanda, and, and it's I can literally hand it to you. And what I give it to you uh, for is just between the two of us and I can do it privately. Nothing's reported. That will go away soon, but I can still do it with physical gold and silver. Abby Rose is saying, I feel silver will skyrocket more than gold and is more affordable. It is true per ounce. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Silver is more affordable than gold. Yes. And, and it will skyrocket more than gold. I think that it has a better chance to double or triple in price than gold does. So it, it doesn't matter if somebody if buys a million dollars worth of gold or a million dollars worth of silver. If silver has a chance to double or triple in price, where I mean more than gold does, then the prospects of silver are great. Whatever is good for gold is going to be great for silver. Do you think you have to be totally rich, Andrew, to buy silver? Not at all. No. no. It. Um, you know, um, I used to work. How much for, is it per ounce? How much is it per ounce? So people know. Silver is about $23 an ounce. Um, okay. They should know that it's going to cost significantly more, more than $23 an ounce because um, all of the silver and gold has a premium. So right now the premiums are a lot lower than they were last November. See, last November, silver was only $18.50 an ounce. It had just gone down several dollars an ounce in a short period of time, which made the premiums go high. So a one ounce silver eagle last November when silver was only $18.50 an ounce, would go for $36, $18 more than the price mm -hmm. of silver. And now you can buy a silver eagle for around um, one third of that premium above the, the spot price of silver. So the premiums can change from time to time. So um, just be prepared that silver is going to cost you more than the per ounce price that you can Google. But it's not just with us. It's, it's anywhere you go. Okay. Renee, who's one of our moderators, is saying, hi, Amanda and Andrew, is there a way to sell silver or gold without having to ship it? I've had some issues with shipping. Yeah. Hi, Renee. It's, um, we've dealt with Renee many times. And um, I would find a local coin store and, um, and just walk in there with it. But there's one problem is 
Um, unfortunately, in our business, if uh, if you walk into a coin store with product that you didn't buy from them and try to sell it to them, they, they make you feel bad about it. They tell you things like, oh, you know, you shouldn't have got that silver. You shouldn't have got that gold. And they say that because they want to be able to buy it from you as cheap as possible. And that does happen. And it's a really, really un unfortunate part of our business. So, so like, for example, when um, Renee has sold things back to us in the past, we've given like a much larger premium than we would if somebody just kind of um, walks in off the street. So, cause we know they bought it from us in many cases, which Renee did not, but we know she's a friend of the show. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, Diana Fleming is asking, she's on Rumble. Uh, can Andrew's company accept a transfer of physical gold and silver from another company? Yes, we can. So we okay. have some, yeah, we have some people that have set up precious metals IRAs through companies that are not us way before they learned about Beverly Hills precious metals. And, um, and they do want to deal with us. So they will contact us and they'll say, well, take a look at my account, look at the gold and silver that's in there. And um, let me know if there's any changes that need to be ma uh, made. And sometimes they'll have all gold and I'll tell them things like you need some silver in there. So let's take half of your gold and swap that out for silver. And then we end up having the other company transfer us the gold and then we transfer them the silver and then it gets taken care of that way. Wonderful. 103 Catherine is asking, where do you cash in silver when needed? I, we have, we have the answer to that. Yeah, it's, um, you can do it here, of course. But, um, one thing that, uh, like on the, the interviews that I'm going on, people are now starting to urge other people to try to transact in silver. So, so let's say that uh, you know somebody that, that you're close with that um, that also invests in gold and silver. And if you're entering into some sort of business transaction with them, then um, for fun and to show that it's possible, let's say you owe somebody $1,300 for something. Well, you can give them $1,300 worth of silver and gold or silver or gold. Either way, you can transact that way and people actually enjoy it. They want to see how it's possible. But to give a more direct answer to that, we won't be able to do it until we end up in some situation like probably what they're dealing with in, in Israel and, yeah. uh, and Ukraine for them. They're not thinking about how do I get to a bank? Forget that. That's they're, they're, they're just trying to live and try to figure out how to get water and eat. It's and true. you can transact yeah. with whatever they have there. And I know for sure they have gold and silver because um, I know people personally that have, that have left Israel and live here in Los Angeles. And when they came, they came with gold and silver. That's right. Uh, I'll tell you something interesting biblically in a second about that. But uh, St. Spears from Rumble is asking: Is there a way I can transfer my investment that is in the S and P five hundred fund now that has a loss of value limit without having to pay taxes? Yeah, if it's in a retirement account, then absolutely. So uh, if that's in like a, an IRA or a four hundred one k, and you've you've invested into the S and P, then absolutely. What we would instruct you to do is fill out the online form, reach out to us, let us know exactly that information. And then we would ask you to, to turn your account into cash, but don't withdraw it. We'll, there's a process where we end up transferring it from, from where you currently have it into our IRA custodian, and that bypasses it, it being a taxable event. Okay. Kelly Halliburton, how valuable is junk silver? I've purchased quite a bit from you. So she's a customer of yours, Andrew. Yeah, I've spoken to Kelly uh, many times as well as her roommate. And um, and they have bought a bunch of the 90% silver. So the thing about the 90% silver is that um, those are the old dimes and quarters and half dollars. And when you make your purchase from us and we send it to you, it, it comes in the bag that says Beverly Hills Precious Metals on it. You open it up and you see these coins that are just old coins. You touch a few of them and your hands get a little bit dirty and you go, wow, you know, I just thought that I was going to get something a little bit more beautiful looking like a shiny bar, something yeah. that's like beautiful that I could show to people. But no, the 90% silver is the best kind of silver because it used to be currency and it still is. You wouldn't want to go and spend it for face value because uh, you'd be um, losing quite a bit. And, um, and it's a 90% silver that many people believe that we'll barter with. So that's what you want to have for sure. That is non-reportable silver. Uh, so reportable silver are the bars that are shiny and beautiful. 
And um, people oftentimes will buy the bars because they realize that they can pay a lower premium. They figure if I could get more silver for the dollars that I'm spending, then that has to be the best option. But it really isn't. It's better than doing nothing, but you want to have the non-reportable silver, especially if you think silver is going to go a lot higher like we do. Mm -hmm. So, so let me ask Andrew, when it comes to IRAs, before we continue with our viewers questions, how long does it take for your company? Say people out there, they have IRAs, they want to roll them over. They want to go back to IRA instead. Oh. How long does it take once they contact you to get that done? Oh, it's, um, we can have it done in less than two weeks. And, um, and, I'll explain the process because it's actually changed a yeah. little bit. Okay. What we used to do is um, when people have indicated on the online form for bh-pm.com that they want to learn how to roll over an IRA or a 401k um, before what we would do is we would um, have, we would email them an eight page application that we've filled out most of the information on. We would have them sign it and send it back to us. And mm -hmm. now we have a, an onboarding system where, um, where we actually connect you directly with the IRA custodian that we use for the precious metals IRAs. So we, we schedule that usually the next day or two days out. Then you have that meeting with the actual company and they get your account open right while you're on the phone. You have an account number before you're even done. Then it's just a matter of getting the funds transferred over. And the funds can be transferred over in sometimes five, six, seven days after that. So it's really taking less than two weeks, closer to about seven to 10 days. And it, it, the process is so pleasant right now. It's much better than it was previously. And I'm sure there's a lot of people watching right now that uh, that did it with us um, a year or two ago when it took like four or five weeks. So it's a lot faster now. Okay. Uh, McLeod is, asking, is saying when hyperinflation sets in, people will want anything but cash. So if hyperinflation sets in, what, ha what does that do with gold and silver? Oh, it's going to make gold and silver worth quite a bit more than it is now. So to explain to the people, hyperinflation is affects us in, in a terrible way. So mm -hmm. a dollar is always going to be a dollar. But what a dollar buys is going to change yes, quite a bit. Changes. Yes, it changes. Yeah. So a dollar today buys quite a bit less than what a dollar did last year. And a dollar today buys quite a bit bit less than what it did five years ago. So if we go into hyperinflation because other countries are selling their um, their treasury their treasury bonds that back the dollar because the dollar is losing value so quickly, then that means that all those dollars we've been printing out of thin air are going to come back here to America, yeah. and we're going to be stuck with them. That will create hyperinflation, and everything will be super super expensive. And you will want to hedge that with gold and silver. And uh, you'll want to barter with anything you can because um, other things won't lose buying power, but the dollar will. That's exactly right. Um, and, I'll, and I'll make another comment, too. So normally when you want an economy to grow, and this is Economics 101, but in order for an economy to grow, you need people to have more what we would call disposable income, meaning extra income left at the end of the month to put into goods and services in the economy. When inflation sets in and taxes are high, the amount of disposable income families have goes way down, which means people are holding on to their disposable income more and they're not injecting it into the economy, which causes the economy to stagnate. So what this, we'll say, regime has done in the United States is just that. They want to raise taxes, right? You have inflation on the rise. You have all of, of, of these different attributes then that cause uh, people to get nervous and hold on to disposable income when they should be, you know, in order for the economy to grow in a country, they have to put it in. So gold and silver is a, is a good thing to do with your disposable income that you do have because you could always cash it back in if you need it and you have it in case of an emergency. Absolutely. And and that's what leads to a recession. And that's probably yes. where we're headed. They're expecting that, that that would happen in 2024. How'd I do with economics, Andrew? Oh, it was perfect. I, I, I got I an A in both classes in college, economics 101 and 102. Oh, for sure. 
for sure. Yeah, I almost majored in it, actually. Fun fact, I almost majored in economics. And instead, Dr. Howe, my professor of economics, told me to to get the degree in finance. So that's a little fun fact about when I was in college. Um, from Rumble, Designer56 is asking, is there a best depository in the U.S. and why? Well, I like Delaware Depository. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the main reason why I like them is that uh, I can always get them on the phone. So if, if I feel like there's an issue with the reporting, if I need to have something sent to me, if I need an yep. updated form to send them, I can get them on the phone. And, and being here That's in California, okay. yeah, it's like being here in California, I would love to store at a place in California, but I opt for Delaware in the complete opposite end of the country because I like the company and they do a good job. And we have the bulk of our inventory that is stored there and we transfer it into people's retirement accounts when they set up precious metals IRAs. And we also, um, we also use them to ship the product directly yeah. to our clients. Wonderful. So it's, um, yeah, it's a, um, I feel, feel safe with them. Eunice Gonzalez says great service, very satisfied and easy, highly recommended. Do not hesitate. Thank you so much, Eunice. I have seen your name and transactions come through. And uh, for some reason, I, I can remember all the names, whether or not I've spoken with you before. Uh, okay. Now, this is interesting because I know there's a difference, Andrew, but seems to be from Rumble, says the paper money is supposed to represent the value of gold or silver. How are these certificates better? Is there gold or silver available to cover all of these certificates? Now, I think they might be talking about gold and silver certificates yeah. instead of the physical, which you deal in the physical. Yeah, it's um so since 1971 there the dollars aren't backed by any gold and silver at all. So uh, referring to certificates usually means um people have um, paper gold and silver investments. Like on the stock market they have, have exchange traded funds for for gold which is GLD and for silver they have SLV. And and um what the person wrote there is actually correct when it pertains to the exchange traded funds in that they're supposed to be backed by a certain number of gold ounces for, for the GLD and the same for silver on SLV. But what we've learned, and you, you can Google this and, and you spend all day reading articles ab about this, but many of the paper gold and silver assets out there that are for sale are oversold many, many, many times over. So yeah. it would work like this. Imagine if I had a house to sell and, and I want to sell it to five different people. And the only thing is, is that no, none of those five people can go and live in that home. That would allow me to sell it to five different people. Well, that's, that sounds pretty illegal to me, it's but that's the exact, it's a scam. And that's what people are doing, or that's what large financial institutions are doing with many of these certificates or these paper backed um, gold products and silver products. So, if you were to talk to your financial advisor and say, I want gold and silver, sell my stocks, um, help me get gold and silver. They cannot sell you physical gold and silver, but they've got many different products out there that are um, paper backed um, gold and silver products where they're basically legalized uh, Ponzi schemes. Because if everybody wanted to sell That's at right. the exact same time on the same day, impossible. You wouldn't be able to do it because there wouldn't be enough of the actual product to yeah. sell. Let me ask you, Andrew, what's your minimum for people when they want to purchase gold or silver? It's the minimum is $2,000. Okay. And um, we have had people that, um, that want to give um, gold and silver for Christmas gifts or. That's or for a good idea, holidays. actually. Yeah. Gifts, uh, mm -hmm. birthdays, graduations. If you want to get your kids started on investing, yeah. all of that is a good idea. Yeah. And if you do that and, and if you if the amount that you're looking to spend is below the minimum, we've we've talked to many different people that are um, Arc of Grace followers that have pooled their funds with family members or friends in order to meet the minimum. So it, just an explanation that the reason why we even have the minimum is because yeah. the depository is shipping most of the um, tra transactions for us and um, they won't do the transactions. They will not ship the ones that are under two thousand. Interesting. Marilyn Bartlett I, she says, I just came on. Do buyers own their precious metals or are they held by the company? I feel like if I don't hold it, I don't really own it. I, I feel exactly like Marilyn feels. Yeah. If, if I don't have it right in front of me, then I feel like I don't own it. However, 
many people out there have found that the storage option is a better option for them. Like yeah. uh, there was one lady, she's a, um, she was in her 80s. She had a, yeah. a large amount of, of um, cash and she didn't feel comfortable having it in the bank. And she lives in, in, a, um, in a building that's in San Francisco where um, she lives way at the top of the building. So to, to try to get and store all of the gold and silver in the location that she lives at just didn't make sense at all. Yeah. So we referred her to the depository and um, everything at Delaware Depository is fully insured, even against um, um, weather, acts, any kind of what they call acts of God. And, um, and you're just covered. So for me, we have a large amount of gold and silver just stored there all the time. I feel it's safe. Okay, wonderful. Um, T Barn 723. Can a TSP, a thrift saving plan, be transferred to silver? Absolutely. We do those every single day. Wow. So, um, definitely reach out to us. Okay. What well, Cyrus, do you have a question, honey? Do you have a question? Cyrus <laughs> wants to know if he can send you a bag of treats for a few ounces of silver. Is that what I, you want I to actually know? Would. Yes. <laughs> yes. I actually do you know that one time. This was like in 2010. Um, somebody sent me a $20 gold piece, like the ones that you've gotten from us before. Yeah. And it had a lot of dirt on it. And and I asked them, um, you know, why only one and where did it come from? And they said that um, they lived on a very, very big property, like a farmland, and, and their German shepherd dug it up in, out in the field. Do you hear this? So Do you, you hear this, Cyrus? Gold. No eating any of that. None of it. <laughs> Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, here. Okay. So Abby's asking if the stock market crash will happen right before the election. Now, maybe we should explain to them, Andrew, everything that goes into a stock market actually crashing. Oh, yeah. Because I think people sometimes get this image in their mind, and I think we need to explain to them the reality of what it takes for that to happen. Well, it's... um. For me, historically, it seems like there's a stock market crash about every seven or eight years. I yeah. remember we had the dot coms in March of 2000. Then in 2008, we had the big uh, financial crisis. Mm -hmm. And um, so we should have had another one in about 2015 or 2016, but we didn't. And I believe that that's because of um, all the quantitative easing that they had with the government bailouts. And um, I, I think that we skipped a cycle. So if the last one was supposed to be in, in say, 2015, 2016, then the next yeah. one would be right about now. And I really feel that it's long overdue. Um, mm -hmm. If you do look at the stock, so like in the last a week or two, they're actually up quite a bit, which doesn't surprise yeah. me with it being an election year. I, I think that it's um, all artificial, as we've mentioned earlier. So yes. I would be cautious. Um, if you insist on being in the stock market, I, I would think that you go into things that you feel very, very, very safe about. And um, if you're approaching retirement age or are retired, you probably don't want to be caught in the stock market during that correction because no, it can no. take years to rebound and you might need to access those funds during that time. And you won't want to if you're down 50% from where you were today. I'll tell you something interesting. I think it was, was it 1966, Andrew, when the stock market crashed? Or it 1968. Was, oh, what was they it? had, let's see, in it's about every seven, eight years. So you, there was one in 87, 1980, 74. Yep, that's about right, around 66, okay. 67. Okay, so here's the interesting part about that, why I'm asking. 90, around that time, was a, considered a Shemitah year on the, on the Jewish calendar. Okay? 2008, when the banking crisis happened, was considered a Shemitah year on the Jewish calendar. These things tend to run, you know what I mean? In parallel to, to the Jewish calendar. Um, to 2028 is the next Shemitah year. 2021 happened to be a Shemitah year. And 2028, the next election after 2024, happens to be a Shemitah year also. Wow. This is going to be interesting. Yeah. It will be. It's um, for me, like if you've made money in the stock market, you've been on a good run for like the last 14, 15 years. There's no need to give all that back. It's it's okay to sit on the <laughs> sidelines. Don't give it sit back to the guys. Take it yeah. and invest it and invest it and 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 get physical, you know, physical assets, gold and silver. Uh, because 
it does hedge. It does protect your other investments. So you want to hedge basically when you're properly investing, right? Exactly. And I've said it before. It's like, it's, it's like a table, right? And you've got four legs on the table. And if one of the legs gets knocked out, you've got the three other legs holding the table up. Exactly. I've had people over the years um, um, voice frustration where they'll say, my real estate's up, my stocks are up, but my gold and silver are down. When are all of them going to go up at the same time? And I go, well, it typically doesn't happen that way. They're, they're always, one is going to offset the other. There's They hedge each other at different times. So gold and silver are typically going to go up when everything else is down and vice versa. Very true. Barbara Sherman is saying, if the fiat dollar is printed out of thin air, why do we have to pay it back? That's a good question, Barbara. That would be, um, that's a really good question. It. Um, I wish we didn't have to, but um, we've agreed that those dollars are actually worth what it says on it. And um, as soon as that confidence is wiped out, it's a, they're going to have to usher in something else to come and save the day. And I think that that's what they're doing with the central bank digital currency. Uh we will we'll have Andrew repeat this because people, many people are coming on and asking this, but the minimum amount that they could buy again, Andrew. Yeah, the minimum is $2,000. Okay. It can be a combination of gold or silver. It can be all gold or all silver. Yep. Um, this is a good question or comment by Ann Good. When pay off your mortgage or buy gold and silver? It... Um, I think that uh, that many people right now that contact us are actually buying gold and silver over that. Um, one mm -hmm. of the guys that, that works for us, um, he he was a client back in from 2014 to about 2021, and then eventually came to work for us. And um, he he can pay off um, he can pay off his cars and his home anytime he wants. But we've sold him like seven figures worth of gold and silver over the years, and he's opted for the latter on that and own gold and silver rather than pay off the real estate. But for me, I like real estate equally as um, gold and silver. I think that um, getting it out of the bank is key. I think the banks are unpredictable. And I think that's absolutely the way to go. Melissa Mendick says, I transferred my 401k on a nudge from God. No regrets. The process was easy and any delay was my fault. BHPM were on the ball the whole way through. So glad I'm out of the black rock vanguard market. Well, thank you, Melissa. And I have seen your name come through as well. Yep. And the, it's that new premium onboarding uh, process. We're the only company in the country that does it. It's a special arrangement that we made with the IRA custodian. And uh, it's just worked out so smooth. And I've done them myself, so I know. Okay, well, we'll do this one last question here. Uh, from VCook95, thank you, Amanda and team. What is the minimum in a 401k to roll over? That's actually a great question. And, yeah, and is. we never talk about that one. So um, realistically, the fees to get it set up are going to be $200 uh, is what it's going to cost every year for just um, the upkeep on the paperwork for your IRA. Then there's $100 a year storage fee through Delaware Depository for the IRA accounts, which is a great deal. You can have... Um, $5,000 in metal there, or you can have $5 million in metal there. It's still only going to cost $100 a year for retirement accounts. So um, you, and then there's a $50 setup fee. So okay. initially it will cost you about $350. So I would recommend that someone that has say less than $10,000 not go this route because it seems like the fees are, are going to be excessive Our, for yeah. the dollar amount. And um, what many people have done when they have the smaller retirement accounts, they've just opted to just cash them out and then buy physical gold and silver and have it stored at their home. Well, you know what, Andrew, we thank you because um, you are a wealth of information on this. Our viewers love hearing about it. They love asking questions. And Andrew is gracious enough to come on and answer questions of all sorts about the market. <laughs> Even oh, yeah. what's what to do with gold and silver, Andrew, Andrew comes on and he answers them. So we're so grateful for that. Any closing thoughts, Andrew? We have your information up. Um, I think that um, as we head into the election year, it's um, now it's under 12 months away. I think yeah. that there's um, many, many different prospects out there that make gold and silver the best investment to have, not necessarily to make money, but just to preserve the wealth that you've worked so hard for. It doesn't matter if you have a lot of money or just a little bit. 
because whatever it is that you do have is all that you have. You, that's, you have to protect it. It's a nest egg. So, um, so the premiums on gold and silver are very low right now. The price of gold and silver is very fair and um, the available supply is there. They, everything can ship quickly. So better to reach out sooner than later. We won't pressure you. If you need time to take a step back and pray about it and become comfortable with it, we'll definitely give you as much time as you need. We won't hound you, but definitely reach out sooner than later. Wonderful. We have Andrew's information below. You can reach him by email, phone, or by going to bh-pm.com and you have a form uh, you'll fill out and then Andrew or his team will contact you. So thank you, Andrew, for joining us and a happy Thanksgiving to you and your lovely wife. Thank you so much and same to you. And uh, I hope to be back soon. Andrew will be back on soon, about, about two weeks or so. Andrew will be coming right back on with us. So think about your questions now to get them ready for when he comes back on. And that concludes today our time with Andrew Sorcini. Thank you to everybody who submitted questions. He loves to answer them. Um, and he tells me that it's from Ark of Grace uh, that he gets when he comes on Ark of Grace. He gets some of the best questions. So applause to you guys because he says some of the best questions he gets comes from viewers who watch Ark of Grace. Now, we're going to be back on in a few hours with Grace Out Loud. So yes, it is a double header today. We will be back on in a few hours, me and Marty Grisham, for Grace Out Loud tonight. We hope to see you then. God bless everyone. Keep the faith. Remember, be good stewards with what God gives you. If you want the Lord to increase and give more, Prove to him that you can be a good steward with what you already have. This is why we do these and we and we and we bring that financial aspect into it because it helps teach people how to be good stewards of what we have. Yes, God provides, but he provides as well as we show him we know how to be good stewards of what he has given us to steward on this earth uh, for his glory. So remember that going forth. Uh, Psalm 91. I encourage you guys to speak that every single day. Very powerful psalm. Armor up according to Ephesians chapter 6. Keep the faith. We'll be back on in a little bit with Grace Out Loud. Hello, everyone. Amanda Grace here. So, as many of you know, Dr. Mark Sherwood and Dr. Michelle Sherwood of the Functional Medical Institute are mine and Chris's doctors. And so, I went to Dr. Sherwood with a problem that I was seeing, not only with, with what I was going through, but with what other women were going through concerning their metabolism, concerning energy, concerning their hormones. And so we put our heads together and we are very happy now to finally be able to present to you Rafa for women. Rafa means healer in Hebrew. So it is an ode to the Lord because he is our healer. He put things in the earth that help heal us. And so Rafa is a product that was created for that. It also helps by helping with a healthy metabolism and natural hormones, as well as it helps balance fatigue. It helps with weight gain, night sweats, mood swings, blood sugar issues, and more. It is all natural. And I find more and more people are going into the natural arena in order to find solutions to issues that they're going through. So if you'd like to learn more, you can go to www.arcofgrace.org forward slash ministry dash partners to learn more about Rafa today. God bless. Hey everyone, Amanda Grace here. If you are looking for advice on financial matters, if you think gold and silver might be right for you, go to bh-pm.com today. Andrew Sorcini of Beverly Hills Precious Metals, who has been on Ark of Grace many times and loves to answer our viewer questions, is here with his team to answer all of your gold and silver needs. Whether you want to buy gold and silver, whether you have questions to see if it's right for you, whether you are looking to roll over retirement accounts, go to bh-pm.com today and Andrew and his team will be more than happy to assist you with all of your needs. 
If you want to support an amazing patriot and be a blessing, go to MyPillow.com today and use promo code ARK, A-R-K, to save up to 66% or more off of all MyPillow products. They have pillows, of course, but they are so much more than pillows. They have sheets. They have slippers. They have bathrobes. They even have dog beds. And a fun fact for all of you, Noble, one of our pigs at our animal sanctuary, has indeed slept on a MyPillow dog bed. So if you want to be a blessing, you can go to MyPillow.com today and use promo code ARC. It is an alternative to big pharma based on quantum physics, over 40 scripture verses written into these patches for everything from blood sugar, anxiety, pain, neuropathy, to immune system boost, dog pain. They are very sincere about um, having alternatives to big pharma. We are a big advocate of natural solutions to help with pain and, and, and blood sugar and a host of other issues. I yeah. tried the pain patches and, yeah. and they worked when I used them. When you connect it to your body, the skin patch changes changes your brain waves. Sugar, this one is neuropathy. I actually have it on. And we use this on Toby, actually, because Toby's about eight years old. And from being paralyzed years ago and the Lord miraculously healing him, he has a little leftover with his joints and his hips. So we actually give him the doggy pain patches. What was he doing? He was running? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I walked him out and wow he's boom and he got power i said no way and i don't know i said amanda what what did you do to him to <laughs> <laughs> so it's good